On the main road between Cork and Killarney is an impressive building from the 1930s, which continues to turn heads to this day. Every time I drive through Balavornia, I can't help glancing at the landmark building that used to be Colosti Scone. In Chia a Grilor and a Gueltachta, in Nierher Hurkig, Marava Hogwarts of Schelta Harry Potter, a Volach Shasen Colosti Isagon. In the early days of the state, with the revival of the Irish language in mind, Colosti Isagon opened its doors in 1940. This boarding school for boys was to become a major recruitment source for future trainee primary teachers. The school closed in 1989 and for the next 30 years it lay empty and derelict, until now that is, when plans are finally underway to redevelop and repurpose this Cork Gaeltacht building into a GTEC regional digital hub. Before work begins on the building itself, some past pupils help me soak up the atmosphere. Well, um, it's totally different from here now to what it was then. Those trees were not there. And I remember the first view I made of it when I came here in 45, and it was brilliant with lights. There was no electricity where I came from at the time, but this was a massive light. Uh, to me, it's, it appeared to be heaven. The first look I had at this wonderful place, I thought it was a wonderful place from day one. Now I came because they felt that they, I needed a bit of discipline. And I was very keen on coming myself because the place had, I was into football and the place had a great reputation and I wanted to be involved. The school was run by the De La Salle brothers who were dedicated to education. Srivan Nagelge. You have incredible paperwork here, and especially the documentation, Thagot. This one in particular I'm interested in, the first day here in Colosti Sagan. Yeah, it says here, um, 53 pupils arrive for the opening of class term. Of these, 28 had been in Malo for three years. The other 25 pupils had spent one year in Colosti de Cuivin in Glasnevin, which was closed in July 1939. They had spent their second year in Colosh de Ende in Galway, where they had all passed the inter-certificate with honours in June 1940. And that's the 3rd of September 1940. That is the first day of Colosh de Isagon. Like all post-primary schools pre-1966, this was a fee-paying school but it also set out to lure bright students with scholarships. It was such a brilliant initiative to have grant schemes for Skolarachti scholarships for Gaeltacht boys in particular. Absolutely. And of course, the government of the day was looking for a highly educated a teaching force. And the only way you could ensure that was to get the best students available. And therefore, the whole system of scholarships came into place. So if you did pretty well in the primary start, as it was known then, you got a scholarship to one of these Kalashti Ulvukan, one of these uh, preparatory colleges, because that's what they were, to prepare students uh, to go to the teacher training college, uh, college, especially in Dublin and other places around the country. The De La Salle ethos is not just about education, it's so much more. I think it goes back to uh, the Roman poet Juvenal, and he had something about orandum est ut sit men sane in corpore sano. And that translated means pray for a healthy mind in a healthy body. 
I love the roll call book in every school. There was Uncha, Uncha. So some of the surnames are very, um, well, of course they are, but they're very monster names. So, you know, Olainchig, De Borca, Odriskeol, De Poer, Odul, O Mortin, O Suluan, O Neil, I mean, O Kruhur. They yeah. all. They all tell a story. Absolutely. You, you see that most of them actually came from Kuna Kurki, Kuna Unklar, Kuna Limni, Dangani Kusha, Tralig, Kuna Kiri, Agus, Agus, Bun and So, Feki to Mihal, Amara Herktik, Nis De Ni. And the old Irish writing with the sputter and Absolutely. Dun Shi, Dun Shi on, Agus, Dangani Hush, Dangani Hush. Agus and Thalia, the amount everybody paid. Agus um, Fekki Tu and So, a Nidia Daha Da Kuig, well, uh, 1945, 1945 here, yes, I see it here. 1945, absolutely, and so. Agus and Nidia died a shay, fack, not the fack. Agus and Nidia died, Osha, Agus and Sunny died a shot, a cooey point, Agus cooey point, a cooey point. Now we won't go chasing Mihal looking no. for his um, <laughs> school fees. He probably was on her scholarship. From day one, I liked the place. Strangely, I wasn't lonely when I left home. I had never been abroad and I was curious. And then there was no pressure for exams. Not like you have nowadays, you know, A's and B's and everything like that. We knew that we had a passage into the training college which would be in Dublin. So there was no, that was good, no pressure. We got lots of free days. Any excuse at all. Law sayer. If we'd come up with an idea, law sayer. A free day. And nobody would come with us. We'd often hire bicycles to go to the other side of the hills or into McCroom or back the road towards Kerry. There was great freedom and great trust. There was no football in England in my time for the schools. And a lot of the people that came from Tralee schools and other places in Kerry, they were good footballers, came from Donegal. They did. Well, I played a bit. I was at it. We were at it. It was out there every day. Another well-known past pupil was Mickey Ned O'Sullivan, who went on to become a senior All-Ireland medalist for the Kerry football team, as well as a manager for Kerry and Limerick. The scale was enormous here. The, the length of the corridor, yeah. and... You see it right the way. It's like yes. Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, honey, come on, since we walked in, Pamanga Gaudi Earth, you have a smile on your face. You had a good time here, am I right? Yes. Um, it, the memories are positive, and I suppose the main thing was the friendships and the interaction. You live together with your class for five years, and those friendships are still as strong as ever. This is the refectory, and you had tin at each table, and the kitchens were in there, and there was a leader in each table that would go and collect the food, and then there was a rotation system. Monday, certain person here would have first choice. Tuesday, the next person. So, it, in other words, to keep control of people grabbing the food. But the standard of food was very good in comparison to other boarding schools in Munster. And just before Grace, after meals, the, the letters would be handed out, the post. And the post was very important, a letter from home. And every Saturday evening between five and six, uh, there was an hour to write your letter home. So, and that was the connection. Was there tough discipline? I mean, did you have, what was the punishment and what would you have had to have done to be punished? Um, discipline was a high priority. It was the time, it was the ethos at the time. 
and corporal punishment existed, but the corporal punishment was the strap. So you'd get, if you stepped out of line, you could get six of the best. And that, that, that was sore. But you took it on the chain, as they say, and you had to accept that. I have very fond memories of Holland the Sheem Sea. Draw me a scale. And people would come in from McCroom, people would come in from Coulé especially, and Balamikir. They'd come to entertain us. People would be doing anything that would come into mind. There'd be old props around from plays that were played before, before our time. They'd use them. And strangely, this is the first place I ever caught a microphone. It wasn't a real one, but it was for a play. It, was, it looked like one. And there was somebody going around with it, and for some reason, I went and took it off him. And I had it, it was afterwards I thought, when did I get a microphone for the first time? In Holland, the CMC, Kalashti, Iskan, Balavod, Nakun, Dekhorki. Every class had its own dormitory, and that was supervised by a brother, and who would have his own separate quarters adjacent to the dormitory. So this is actually, I spent two years in this dormitory, or this cubicle. But you remember? I do, yeah. When I was in third year and fifth year, this was my room. We could keep an eye on who was coming in the main door, out the window. Everyone had their own uh, washing basin and your bed was here. And uh, the, you had your own privacy as well. You had curtains. Yes, that was, you pulled a curtain for your privacy. And when you went to bed at night, you pulled your curtain. But if you wanted to go to be called for mass in the morning, you hung your towel over the curtain and you'd be called earlier. And those who didn't want to go to the mass got an extra half an hour in bed. I admire that. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was your decision to stay in bed or go to mass. So which did you do? Well, you'd, 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 <laughs> you'd compromise. You'd, you'd go a couple of mornings, you know, and you'd, you'd sleep in the other mornings. Fair enough. Yeah. Captain Gurbe Mohom revealed Shahanish. Or the air on the ground, and she lol gahort. Or the beer air count, because we share bragal in the finoga galer. We share on the ass and chinook. As I rear maiden, we can saga the tuck, we can cog a boga. Near Venro de Denver took place at the top of the sheets within Shapel. Early to bed and early to rise. The mass was early in the morning, and then we'd have time for our smokes. We were out smoke in Shomer and Amrog, <laughs> where the shoes were left, the football boots and all that. We could smoke away forever there, and we all smoked woodbines. They were the cheapest, and we thought they were the greatest. <laughs> At a time when there was no, no dispute or talk or anything about cigarettes being bad for you. In fact, they thought that smoking was good for you at that time. And thanks be to God, from, I gave them up. in the West Cork Gaeltacht, where long-awaited plans to transform this building are finally underway. Before work begins on the building itself, some past pupils from the old Colosh de Isagon have been taking me on a nostalgic journey. Here. In 
1973, there was a major development. A regular secondary school at this stage, local boys as well as girls were admitted as day students. Denise Kyohan was among the first girls in the school. There used to be such a beautiful garden here and all the, it was beautiful stone around it and there were seats around it and there was a pond down there. Um, it was beautiful, there was goldfish in it and it was a lovely place to sit. It's sad to see it so overgrown and it's kind of a sad, a sad place to visit really at this stage. So it is, it is good that they're going to do something with it. This is where the girls' toilets were. Um, these were the toilets were in here, and this part here was what was our common room. It was where we hung out, where we hung up our coats, where we had left our bags in the evening after study, and we were uh, we'd stand and talk here. This was our sacred area. This little room. This is where all the gossip happened, <laughs> and the fun and the complaining. This was um, our classroom for sixth year here. It brings back a lot of memories. I think the teachers had um, a stand up there so they could reach the board. And all of the girls sat just here at this side and all the boys filled the rest of the room. One of the teachers, you know, he'd know, they'd know, you know, that if we were interacting with the boys or whatever, and he'd just, you know, if you were misbehaving or whatever, he'd tell you, you know, you go to the study this evening from four to five, so it meant you had no socialization with the boys after school. So you tear good instead there on a car, good in a cooig. So um, I think they knew how to manage us well. The girls always brought in that different dimension, that different, um, call it a gifts, if you like, in terms of relationship. And I, I, I like that expression, uh, to, to soften the atmosphere. Oftentimes when you've got boys in one space for a long period of time, there is a, a certain hardness in relationships. When the girls are there, they don't want to let themselves down uh, in front of the girls. So there is a toning down, I guess, on every side, and that has to be a win-win for everybody. When the school went co-ed, Mickey Ned, who decided not to pursue primary teaching after all, returned to the school as a geography, career guidance and PE teacher. When you came back as a teacher, how important was sports here? Sport was always important, but it was very much geared towards Gaelic football. My job was to give every student an opportunity of playing every sport over their five years. It could be a racket sport, it could be a ball sport, it could be gymnastics, it could be canoeing, it could be outdoor pursuits, something that suited everybody. Everybody had to find a lifelong sport and a present sport so that you try to educate through the physical experience and the decision makings involved in these sports as well. We have great memories of Mickey Nidge bringing back the Sam Maguire to the school. It was, I think, it was probably the most exciting thing that happened here in my time. Even though we were all from Cork, we didn't mind, you know. We were happy that he brought it and it was really nice and it created a great atmosphere and great excitement in the school on the day. And everybody was very proud of him and so, you know, it made, it made for great excitement. And, you know, it just, I suppose, reflected the ethos of the football in the school as well, you know. That was part of what it was. Cloche de Isagon eventually closed its doors in 1989 after almost 50 years. In 1998, it was bought by Udras Nagaltachta, and as it lay empty in the early 2000s, it became a perfect ready-made movie set for the filming of Song for a Raggy Boy with Aidan Quinn. Before we start, let's get a few things straight. You will call each other by name. Secondly, your reasons for being here are no concern of mine. My only concern is that while you are in this room, that you learn something. Thirdly, you can ask me any question you like. I will try and answer it. If I can't, I will say so. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After 30 years of dereliction, 
plans are finally underway by Udras Nagaltachta to transform this building into a G-Tech digital hub with startup companies and remote working facilities. Investments of almost 5 million euro from the Udras and the Enterprise Ireland Regional Development Fund are getting this project off the ground. Udras Nagaltachta's primary remit is to develop the Gaeltacht so that the Gaeltacht is a strong, thriving community in which the Irish language is the first language. So it's not going to happen without jobs. But at the same time, it doesn't really work just bringing in big companies and leaving it like that. So one of the key factors that we're looking at is getting people to create that entrepreneurial spirit. And that's one of the key things behind what we're doing here with Kolosh de Isagon. So that you have remote working spaces, but also that you can bring people in who might have an idea in terms of a startup, uh, bring lots of them together, create a network, but you know, create an opportunity for them in terms of like training and a space to work and support uh, and get the local people, Muinchen the Gaeltach, uh, to create their own, their own employment and to build from the inside out, as it were, as opposed to bringing uh, investment from the outside solely. You could bring it back to life, Aromam. Dini is shulishtach. You know, young people yeah. are, even to whatever age, arriving here, going to work, meeting other people who do other jobs, and a, a sense of Kamal mask on bone legs, tall on your legs. Agus a lugan gailge, all as gailge. Sine, yeah, sine. Agus a mask on shengurin yoga, tiach la chela, bula la chela. You know, having a coffee and exchanging <laughs> ideas. <laughs> It's come a long way from the original ethos, which was to educate future primary school teachers. But when it opens in 2024, this new thriving business world will have a dramatic impact on the community here on the Gaeltacht. I think it is great to see a building like Kalosh Jisagan that has been lying idle, being regenerated with a modern function that will transfer the Tregent Natuha or the, the rural depopulation where people will relocate. It's a wonderful area to live in. Right now, I think the investment, however small it is, uh, it's a start. And hopefully it will lead to something that we can, that will take uh, this area to another level. I think the whole country know it as a landmark. It will give opportunities to the locality. It will give job opportunities, it will give accommodation, it will give reasons to come here. Um, if all those services are available to people, I think it will be just fantastic. And thanks be to God, it will be involved with the Irish language in every aspect of it. I have hopes that I live to see it developed fully. As of Debeg La Morgan, nor as the second stage of Kalashdi's God.